Look, I think the sheriff is going to try to run me away. The first time I've seen the sheriff down here in forever. All right, what's up party people? Back at you with another video today. So today I th thought I'd talk about the changes that I've made to the van actually since its inaugural trip and uh, kind of why I made those changes. And when I first set out and built this van, I knew I had no clue what I wanted, but I knew I, I could get close enough that I could iterate on that in future trips and kind of get it perfect for what I was looking out of a van. So just keep that in mind. This is not going to be for everybody's taste because I am looking for a very specific setup that I can haul toys in and just have enough room, sleeping space, room to eat, uh, to clean up a little bit and just kind of do that continuously over and over again. I'm gonna start in the back of the van first. The first thing that I think I said this in the video with the trips of my dad is is that, you know, having the bed so high, it's it's a, it's a catch 22. The bad part about it is, is there's not a lot of room up there to kind of roll around. So every once in a while I would uh, roll over, my elbow would hit the ceiling. Um, you know, just things like that. But I knew that before going into this, but I wanted to leave room down in the garage um, in hopes that Probably there will be a full-size motorcycle down here at some point, uh, but we'll see. Uh, the good news, or the good part about uh, being so high up is, is that you're close to the fan up there. So I got some really good airflow coming up and over the bed. But um, after weighing this van, it came in at about 7,300 pounds. You can go back to the very first video of our three-part trip, and you can see the cat scales where I weighed this van were 7,300 pounds. Um, one thing I do is want to try and promote some more airflow up under the bed here and so basically went and drilled out a bunch of holes in this plywood and quite frankly I probably could have actually gone with a slat system and a and a, uh, a strong rail system it would have been more than enough to actual actually handle um, the weight that's going to be up there but um, added these holes on the, all of the platforms and haven't got a real chance to test out exactly how well that's going to work. Uh, sure, it's going to save, you know, a few ounces on the, the weight. But uh, that was the very first thing that we did when we came back. We'll see how this works out and I'll check back in. All right, so the other thing that uh, I did when I got back with two is actually add shore power to the van. Um, so we've got a little receptacle here on the outside. Chose to put it here um, because that was a very logical place for me to put it. It's a 30 amp shore power circuit and I've actually tested it out and it works pretty good. And those that you know my electrical system set up, I've, I have the Victron Multi Plus 3000. It was already set up for shore power and basically all I had to do was cable up this outlet up to the front and where the battery is at and then also uh, do a little bit of uh, um, configuration on the Victron. So I just changed it over to uh, LifePo 4 vet batteries. The system's already built in. Uh, with presets to keep the voltage of the uh, the LifePo 4 batteries at the the best voltage um, charging and discharging. So one of the things I keep with me is a, a 50 foot extension cable there to plug into the outside and a few of these dog bone pigtails uh, for the various different conversions that you might have to do. I actually use this, I plugged it in the house, so I put one of those 15, 15 amp conversions on it and uh, plugged it into my garage uh, and that allows me to utilize my, my AC ports back here in the back and I can run power tools and all that kind of stuff and it doesn't drain down the battery. And the good part about the Victron is, is that when it senses input voltage on the, uh, on the AC end from the shore power, um, it just shoots that right through the system and uh, anything left over to charge the batteries with so pretty cool system so my access port for the actual shore power is down is accessed through this panel down here and i chose to run the cable on the outside at the moment um, i would have to take all the panels off to actually run that inside the wall and while that may be something i do in the future it's actually pretty much out of the way can't really get back there anyhow and it was the easiest way to kind of run it through the front so i uh, worked out pretty well and uh, next time I take the panels off or do something to the bed, I'll, I'll uh, run it um, behind the wall panels. 
All right, so the other thing I wanted to do when I got back was actually figure out some way to utilize the space on the top of the rear doors. Um, it was uh, wasted space the way I was utilizing it, and I'd already had these uh, shoe hangers on both sides to, to handle a lot of the mountain bike gear, and the rest of it was kind of hanging in here on these uh, little hangers in the inside. And while that's great, I really needed to free up some room back here to put some additional water. And I'll talk a little bit about why later. Um, so a lot of my pads and things are... Uh, got the clothesline out today. I was riding and hanging the pads up on the clothesline to dry out so they wouldn't smell. But uh, So basically what I did was I cut these uh, little strips of plywood and just glued them with 3M adhesive to this black panel here. Um, wasn't going to hang much weight from them to begin with and these have actually worked out perfectly and uh, I did two on each side and just put some uh, stainless steel hangers on them and so I've got all of my uh, mountain biking and motorcycling gear that I use all the time hanging up on the back doors here easily accessible and I freed up some space in the back there for another seven gallon water tank as well uh, plus that uh, 50 foot extension cable the other thing that I did was uh, made a mount for my pump, air pump and basically put it on wing nuts and mounted it to the top of one of the bed frames to kind of get it out of the way and uh, off the wall. So that works out pretty good. I can doesn't take much to unscrew the wing nuts there. I'm going to actually go cut down these bolts so uh, I don't have to screw so much. I traded in the, uh, I had one of those water toilets that I really didn't use. I traded in for a luggable loo here, and this is just one of those five gallon bucket kind of uh, bathrooms there with the uh, with the nice little seat and lid on it. So I carry around some uh, trash bags and uh, that luggable loo in case there is a need to, uh, to actually do your duty, so to speak and uh, you'll have somewhere to to do that and dump that i actually find this actually works really well i don't have to worry about um taking another water source around for my uh my bathroom so uh, i think that's a good option there the other thing that uh that both me and my dad did notice too is that you know i've got a gym membership and i could definitely go in and take showers at the uh at the local gyms if i wanted to um, wherever we were at but uh a lot of times we would just come it was so nice out and you know this may change during the winter time or if i'm in colder water, weather we would just come back here open the doors up and i would take the five the seven gallon water jug that's out in under the sink and pour some water i had cut a one gallon jug top off and i would we would pour water in that and i'd sit the uh, shower pump down inside that little one gallon tank there and we would come back here and shower and it worked great you know good enough right the water was not you know hot or even warm to some degree but it worked good enough to clean us up the one thing that i didn't like about it was that the pump that i had would not fit down inside one of these uh, seven gallon tanks here and i really wanted to to make use of this extra space here so i put this seven gallon tank and I wanted to find a pump that was small enough to actually fit down in the spout of the seven gallon tank. Did some searching and ended up finding this particular shower head here. Um, and it actually has a smaller pump. It's, it's built a little bit differently than the orange one that I have. And this actually fits right down into that spout, that white spout there of that seven gallon tank. And uh, with that shower head, uh, we can take a pretty good shower. You can see here, this is the old shower pump that I had. And there was two things I didn't like about this. The, sh the actual pump button is down here. And this is the actual pump that you have to submerge down in the water. So basically, you could turn this on, but you had to be, you had to either lift the pump out and turn it off or in order to conserve water, it was very difficult with this pump. And you had to have something that this head could actually fit in. And it looks like these showers are pretty much made by the same companies. But this, uh, the pump here will fit down in that seven gallon jug spout. This one will not. And so I had to, I had to manipulate one of my water carriers in order to fit this down. And being, and having to, to actually reach down in the water and turn this on and off when you wanted to stop and start the water flow was, was not that advantageous. 
and something the new pump actually has so basically this one has a remote control cable hooked to the has a remote control cable hooked to the pump so you can actually hold that in your hand and control the water coming out of that pump which makes it much more efficient and you don't waste as much water as you do with this one uh, because that one you're you're, you're trying to uh, clean yourself off and then you're trying to use one hand to go in in the water and kind of cut pump off and it defeats the purpose sometimes because your hand might be soapy the other modification we made was carrying around this kind of shower curtain here and this is kind of giving us a little bit of privacy and basically it's just uh, a uh, kind of vinyl sh shower curtain here and it's held up by some picture hanger wire and two 60 pound magnets on the east side of the rear doors here and i'll show you what this looks like from the outside and it basically gives you a little bit of sense of privacy when you're actually taking a shower or if you're changing or whatever i do need to put another row of grommets in here and uh, have the magnets spread out at the bottom too because you can see what happens is Sometimes, depending on which way you're facing, the wind may blow it into you. Um, so I'm going to put an additional two magnets down here at the bottoms and uh, some grommets here. And that will, uh, that will solve that problem. But yeah, it's just one extra way. There was a couple of times where we went to some of the campsites um, that were off the grid that there were people already there and it's just nice to be able to kind of go back there and not having to expose everybody to what you're doing back here so that was one of the other things that uh, we've had so the other thing that i want to talk about is don't underestimate the amount of bugs that are going to be in the vehicle or trying to get in the vehicle and previously i had my mosquito net just kind of hanging here in the bag and i would put them up uh, but what i've done now is i've pre-hung all of the mosquito nets with uh with ties and basically some of this uh, picture frame wire I can just untwist these and roll this out and I have a full mosquito screen net protection here on the back and did the same thing for both the uh, the side door here as well uh, up there at the top so I've got those mosquito nets that are that are pre-hung and all I have to do is kind of roll those down and they're held on by magnets and all right, so the other thing I did was I installed an additional one of these uh, remote entry panels. And the reason being that I'd already had one on the side slide door here, and it works great. But what I was finding is, is that when I come back from mountain bike, bike rides or if we came back here to take a shower or whatever and the van was locked, it was just so much easier to kind of have access to open the door and lock the doors from back here the problem is is that if you put especially on a cargo van with no windows and depending probably what kind of cargo you have inside if you put this remote up here where i initially had it it does not work and so it was kind of a search and find the best place to put it it seemed like it worked the best if it was up here around here some area but it kind of looked weird i tried to turn it sideways and it was just awkward so I ended up going down here and uh, it actually works pretty good down here. All right, so let's, uh, let's move around to the front and talk a little bit about uh, some of uh, the mods up here in the front half of the van. And those of you that saw our uh, kind of inaugural trip, there was multiple times where I referenced how many bugs were on this van, uh, including from the bumper at the bottom all the way up to the hood and up at the top on the mirrors i mean just so many bugs were on this van me and my dad actually washed it and waxed it when we came back and it, it was just a ton of bugs and so i went and uh, purchased this avs bug deflector and uh, it just sticks on with double-sided uh, tape and i've added that since and so i've driven a few times uh in the country at night and it seems to help out a little bit i don't know how much it will help out in the long run uh, it doesn't look too bad it didn't take away from the looks of the van too much but uh, hopefully that'll help deflect some of the wind and the bugs over that huge windshield uh, that is one big windshield and the one thing that uh, you notice that i mentioned too is, is that on our inaugural trip we actually broke we cracked the windshield um, so i had to get safe light to come in and actually repair the windshield um, it didn't crack enough where i needed to replace the windshield it just did one of those resin repairs and it seemed like it did a good enough job hard to tell um, you can you can see it from the inside a little bit but uh, 
it's not something I would worry about at this point in time. My guess is it's probably going to get a lot more chips and cracks. Being that it's so big, it takes up so much real estate in the front end. All right, so let's move, uh, let's open the slider here and talk about some changes that I made from the inside. Uh, one change that I made right off the bat, and you know, it's a simple change, but it's the little things that count in life, I think, sometimes. Having the hinge at the top is where it used to be, and so you would open this uh, cabinet access space from the bottom. And what I was finding is, is that I would stand under and keep it open with my head while I use my two hands to fiddle around inside. And so what I've done now is actually change that and uh, it opens down. And so you're free to go about inside here and access all the things that you need to. So just a simple minor change there. The other change I made uh, was to the sink. For those of you that recalled, I had a huge sink. Uh, it was a deep sink, it was a wide sink, and what I found out is, is that we wasted more water trying to clean that sink out and get it to drain uh, than we did just taking showers all together. And so, the one thing I wanted to do when I got back was figure out a solution that was going to work for me. Now, if you're going to be washing a lot of dishes and you're going to have big pots and pans, this is not going to be your thing. But if you want to conserve water and you're trying to use as least amount of water as possible, having a sink with an oval bottom. And uh, so this is a small oval undermount sink. But the great thing about it, it is oval and the, the bottom is not flat whatsoever. I had a uh, rectangular sink before. The problem with that type of sink is getting it to drain out because the, uh, the bottom's so flat, you get water, it gets stuck in one corner or the other. Uh, the van's never going to be um, level all the time, so you spend a lot of time. If you spit in it and you spit, your spit hits the side, then, well, you've got to turn your water on to rinse that out now. Uh, with this sink, everything rinses out great because it's, it's small enough to take care of the essentials, and the water tends to drain to the center here because of the shape of the walls of the sink. It's those things that you don't think about. Uh, I thought it was going to be so nice having a big sink that I could drop my pump in. I would take a shower outside here. Uh, we ended up, up not doing that whatsoever. And so I changed that big sink out for the smaller sink. And I have more storage room in my cabinets down below now as well. And I'll probably actually end up putting a shelf inside as well. The other thing too is, is that I was able to uh, undermount this sink and just build this top. So I left a lip around here. And this top sits in and covers it up. And so I have, uh, you know, cabinet space now too as well, uh, which I didn't have before with the other sink. I could have built something, but I, I never did. Look, I think the sheriff is going to try to run me away. The first time I've seen the sheriff down here in forever. But uh, anyhow. All right, so that's the update on the sink. So let's talk about some of the other updates we made real quick. So, um... If we open the van door up completely here. All right, so added this uh, fold down outside table. And uh, I've actually had my two burner stove out here and it worked really well. So, you know, I've told you about those cooking stories with the Instapot inside the van when it was like 100 plus degrees. So they got super hot with it blowing steam in there. Uh, so I built this uh, kind of outside table here. And then basically it just folds up into two pieces and uh, latches up here on the back side of the sink with some, uh, with some bungee. Uh, rope and uh, I've actually cooked on the two burner stove on this thing and it works pretty good as long as you don't kick the leg out from underneath it you're good so I think what I'll end up doing is put some leg stops on it but uh, you know that's an iteration for uh, a future trip basically so some of the other things too I did was um, I found out that this space between the microwave here and the battery box and the electronics I used part of it but the other part I didn't use for anything so I ended up just buying these plastic drawers, glued them together, and uh, they're just held in the front with some of this paracord. It works really well. You can open your drawers and get access to anything. If you need the big access, you can just pull it over to the side here. Super cheap. You can go to Walmart or wherever and you can buy those plastic bins. And I've used those before. I've got some down here. I've got some on the other side back there. And I've got some that holds my, uh, my towels and washcloths and, and those things as well. So they're super cheap and easy to kind of manage and you can use that 3m adhesive and basically glue the frames together and they're they're pretty they handle uh the loads pretty well so it's 
pretty pleased with that. All right, some of the other changes I made to the inside was I um, actually installed this bully net. It's basically a truck net uh, for the back of the uh, tailgate of the truck. So you remove the tailgate and you kind of put this net up. But uh, I made some fixture points in the ceilings and some on the sides over there. And this net is actually there because one of the things that we did is we found that we started using the bed storage, the bed space as storage space. Especially if you had people that were on a trip with you, like my dad, he brought some luggage with him. So I put the luggage up there and some of the sleeping bags. And to keep that stuff from actually uh, being ejected forward into us in the front, which did happen on a couple occasions. Uh, not It didn't hit us, but it came through the middle of the seats. Uh, this will stop that and keep it from, from actually uh, hitting us in the front. Also purchased this fan at a truck stop. Uh, it's a 12 volt fan and basically just kind of mounted it to the wall and it's one of those that oscillates and since this area is so popular when i'm in the van uh, that fan since this area is so popular in the van it just made sense to have a, a fan sitting up there as well all right so one of the things i did was relocate the light switches so these light switches were previously uh down below and so I moved those two above the bed so much easier to access now and in their space I actually pulled in another 12 volt accessory that you can see there and so that 12 volt accessory now allows me to uh, do a few things I've got 12 volts on the passenger side of the van over here now by the sliding door which is which is really good because I can charge my water pump uh, for my sink I can actually power my uh, mirror that I use to shave in uh, and those things and have a 12 volt accessory that's close to the sliding door and so uh, that worked out great as well all right so let's talk about the final changes that i made to the van since our inaugural trip so this van is equipped with a rear view camera that is part of the tail light and it works fabulous it shines in the mirror it's great it's awesome having no uh, windows in the back you need those big mirrors on the side and the rear view camera to actually maneuver this vehicle and I say it works perfectly the way it is the one thing I wanted to do was have a camera that was always on and so I installed this uh, rear facing camera here over the license plate as well and I was able to use the factory grommets and cable routing and pull that through the rear door and up through this factory cable protection here on the back and then run it up the side and all the way around into my uh, my cable alleyway up there and to, to the front to actually power that and so that's 12 volt powered camera and it is running toward the other upgrade that I made instead of uh, splitting that signal off and uh, having it go to uh, the mirror here which is where the factory video uh, reverse signal is uh, ended up pulling it into the new head unit here so I put in a Pioneer AVIC 5201 NEX uh, with GPS you can see the GPS antenna up here I also installed a amplifier four channel amplifier I'm only using two channels of it right now it's a Rockford Fosgate Prime I think it's a 300 watt um, amplifier and also while i was at it if you're going to install all that installed a uh, 300 watt powered uh, subwoofer 10 inch as well um so really kind of upgraded the sound in here i didn't change the speakers in the doors or the uh the a pillars here um because well once you start moving the frequencies over to the subwoofer that are really low that the, the speakers actually don't sound bad whatsoever and i've got enough power with the uh with the amplifier here uh, it sounds really good actually so i was quite pleased with the sound and until they blow up or something happens i'm not going to change them out but uh, um, i really like this head unit and basically i can get my reverse camera view let's see let's power this on I can get my reverse camera view um, all the time in here. So this, this head unit has a rear view camera input, but it also has an additional auxiliary uh, video input. And I'm using that auxiliary video input that's not looking for the reverse signal. So 
I can go to my uh, my AV control center here and select camera view and I can get a uh, rear view camera view here 100% of the time and I can even have it up there while I'm driving kind of gives you some awareness of what's going on behind the van things like that um, I liked it so much what I actually end up doing is so right now I've got it on uh, on switch 12 volt it comes on with the with the head unit but the other thing I did too was actually go back in the back and put a switch up here in the top panel up here and I can actually turn this on to number two here which will give me 12 volt constant coming from my coach batteries and I can actually hook a video monitor into the system there all right so once I have the switch turned into the number two position here I'm running off my coach batteries instead of the chassis battery and the coach batteries I can actually run full time right and so if I wanted to take this little video monitor uh, back in the bed with me at night I can see what's going on kind of around the back of my van I'll probably add a little bit more camera uh, exposure around the van that way I can see a little bit more what's going on and then when I come back and want to just run uh, and look at the signal at the head unit up there I put it back onto the uh, chassis battery here and you can see we lose our video signal because our camera is not powered up it won't power up until we get our switch turn our switch on up front so just kind of a nice to have um, gives you some awareness of what's going on around your surroundings of your van all right so there's a couple of reasons actually a few reasons why I upgraded the head unit and actually installed this amp um, the Rockford Fosgate Prime and then installed the subwoofer in the back uh, first of all the quality of sound the stock radio was pretty bad so that was the first reason just having the quality of sound second reason was the GPS you know when you use Google Maps they work great <coughs> and Waze I use those two apps a lot and I wanted to be able to use those two apps um, continuously but um, the one thing that uh, you don't realize is that sometimes it just does not work and uh, for example if you're in an area that you've never been in and the uh, request for a map goes to the cloud and uh, you may get blank space back um, because uh, you just can't get to the map data. There's no cell phone signal to actually download the map data. Uh, and that's where a GPS system and antenna comes in handy. Uh, it's not something that I ran into a lot, but on a few occasions, I was very cautious about where I would go. Um, and I'd make sure I would do a download uh, um, offline maps on the Google Map uh, app. Whenever I knew I was going into territory where there probably wasn't cell phone signal. Um, but that's, that can be a pain sometimes, and it ended up getting us turned around on an occasion in the mountains. And uh, just having that extra GPS map data that's already resident on the device and a GPS antenna is just another additional kind of uh, measure of, of having some good directional you know, cues to help you figure out where you're at. Because uh, it's just a lot easier to have these kind of electronics that uh, can give you that data right at your fingertips. So... Um, that was the other reason I wanted to uh, to actually upgrade and like I said uh, you know just to get some of the technology updates um, like uh, the Apple CarPlay being able to, to kind of use that with my phone in conjunction uh, with the uh, the head unit and have that additional display for and input for the uh, for the rear camera that I mounted um, it really comes in handy so I'm really glad I uh, actually decided to do this um, all of this stuff can be taken out and moved um, fairly easily the amp is held on with uh, some industrial strength velcro uh, the amplifier I have a remote remote gain control that is mounted down here in the bottom of the parking brake the uh, powered subwoofer itself has a quick connect on it which uh, it has the remote turn on the ground and the battery and you can just pop that off in one snap and you get all three of those unplugged and then you just unplug your low signal um, your low voltage signal RCA plugs and you can move this sub wherever you want to and so 
that's really good for me because it, it, it can get in the way here, especially if I'm carrying a passenger uh, that may want to either swivel or actually sleep in between the seats, uh, which has been done on several occasions. So I can move this sub around, disconnect it, and put it, you know, out and stow it out of the way. So uh, that's another really good feature. It, it's kind of uh, portable like that in a sense. So also have the uh, microphone mounted on the steering column there so that uh, I can give my Siri input commands or, uh, you know, phone, you know, bringing up my contacts, calling people, speaking, changing uh, uh, voice to text messages, those things as well. All right, everybody, that'll do it for this video. Give me a big thumbs up if you like the content. Even if you don't like the content, give me a thumbs down. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, it'd be awesome if you go down there and click that subscribe button. And there's a bell just beside that subscribe button that'll notify you of all the new uploads. Click that bell and select all, and you'll get notified. Share the link with your friends. Comment down below if you uh, know some other changes I need to make to this van because we're headed back out. Um, I'm going to do some serious mountain biking this fall on this van and this winter as well. So uh, stay tuned.